welcome everybody to another of our online services here at Top Church. We are soon going to be holding services back in the church and we will keep you updated on the details for that. But today we are worshipping in this way for the next half an hour and we just hope that wherever you are you might be able to engage with this service, that you might feel you can participate in the worship as David and Grace lead us in sung worship or in response to the intercessions. Today we're starting a new series and James is going to bring us an encouragement about sharing our faith and Claire is going to bring a message for our youth and our children. But first, as we meet, in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit, David Robinson is going to lead us in our opening liturgy. Thank you, David. Jesus invites us to a way of celebration, meeting and feasting with the humble and the poor. Let us walk his way with joy. Jesus beckons us to a way of, of risk, letting go of our security. Let us walk his way with joy. And Jesus challenges us to, to listen. Listen to the voices of those who have nothing to lose. Let us walk his way with joy. And Jesus points to a way of, of, of self-giving, where power and status are overturned. Let us walk his way with joy. And Jesus calls us to follow the way of the cross, where despair is transformed by the promise of new life. Let us walk his way with joy.
So this week, we are going to start talking about how we tell our friends that we know Jesus. So Wait, when I... W- what? Tell our friends that we know Jesus? Yeah. I haven't told any of my friends I know Jesus or that I go to church. Well, haven't you? No. Well, do you want to tell them? Well, yeah, I think so. Okay. Just... I don't know how to start, really. Hey, that's all right. We'll figure it out together. Okay. Okay. Sometimes it's hard telling your friends that you're a Christian because they have all these questions and I don't have all the answers. Hmm. Maybe this will help. The other day, Tom, it was my friend's birthday and he had a huge birthday cake. This is my piece here. Now, if I was going to tell you about this birthday cake, I don't think I'd tell you what factory made all the ingredients or how long it takes in the oven to bake it. I think I would be telling you that it tastes really, really good. And probably you should give it a try. Ah, so I can just tell my friends that being a Christian is really good and and they, they should give it a try. Exactly. You don't need to have all of the answers or be brilliant at telling people about Jesus. You just need to tell them what you know and what you do. Tell them you go to church. Tell them that you pray. And if they have questions, there are plenty of other people that can answer them. Ah, I feel so much better about that now. That's really good. It can be hard to tell people about Jesus, but we'll keep talking about it for a few weeks and hopefully we'll learn some other things along the way. We're beginning our series today on sharing faith. And when I cast my mind back to the earliest memory I have of someone sharing their faith with me, I was about four years old. I'd gone to a kids club on a weekend and Tony Maidment was there. He's someone that comes to Top Church from time to time and he was running this event And he told us a little bit about Jesus and then he said, if anybody here wants to call Jesus their friend, come and find me at the end and I'll tell you how. And it was that simple. At the end of the the morning, I found Tony and I said, I want Jesus to be my friend and that was that. It can be really simple. So for you, the youth at Top Church, I wonder if you can cast your minds back to your early memories of when people shared their faith with you when you had that moment where you were introduced to Jesus? What was it like? What do you remember? And what can you learn from it when you think about sharing your faith with other people? Have a think about it this week. We're gonna talk on Thursday and I'm actually really looking forward to hearing about all the different ways that you as young people have come to hear about Jesus. So how did I become a Christian? I didn't grow up in a Christian household. I knew the Lord's Prayer because the primary school that I went to, that was something we said every day in our school assemblies. As the years went on, when I was sort of um, an early teenager, because I knew the Lord's Prayer, I began to start saying it. And at that time, my um, nan had died as well. And I got a sense of comfort from saying the Lord's Prayer. As time went on, I'd add things on to the prayer as well and it would make me feel better. I wasn't sure if I believed or not. Um, I think I did and I got a sense of comfort thinking that God could potentially be listening to my small little prayer. Anyway, as time went on and I started university, um, everything went well. I enjoyed university. I wasn't going through anything in particular, but I felt that something was missing in my life. And when I look back now, I think there were people, people in my life and that were there to sort of help bring me towards God. There was a lady that I was working with and I was on her mailing list and she'd email to me scriptures on a regular basis. And I started to get a lot of comfort from those scriptures. As time went on, I started to explore that. But this was over a space of some years. And then one day I was in the Frankie and Benny's car park at Mary Hill with a friend of mine, Lydia, and We'd had an evening together and she prayed for me in her car. I can't remember exactly what she said, but she she introduced God to me and I welcomed Jesus into my life. Um, I felt instantly at peace. 
and knowing that that was what was missing. John's Gospel, Chapter 4. Jesus came to the town of Sychar. It was near the field that Jacob had long ago given to his son Joseph. The well that Jacob had dug was still there, and Jesus sat down beside it because he was tired from travelling. It was noon, and after Jesus' disciples had gone into town to buy some food, a Samaritan woman came to draw water from the well. Jesus asked her, would you please give me a drink of water? You're a Jew, she replied, and I am a Samaritan woman. How can you ask me for a drink of water when Jews and Samaritans won't have anything to do with each other? Jesus answered, you don't know what God wants to give you and you don't know who is asking you for a drink. If you did, you would ask me for the water that gives life. A lot of Samaritans in that town put their faith in Jesus because the woman had said, 
This man told me everything I have ever done. They came and asked him to stay in their town, and he stayed on for two days. Many more Samaritans put their faith in Jesus because of what they heard him say. They told the woman, we no longer have faith in Jesus just because of what you told us. We've heard him ourselves and we're certain that he is the saviour of the world. If it's your first time in joining us on one of our online services, then can I just add my welcome and say it's a great time actually to join uh, and to engage with Top Church as we're looking at a brand new series today over August, over our summer month, which will obviously be full of sunshine here in the UK. And we're looking at uh, what it means to share our faith in Jesus. Now, I don't know about you, when I think about sharing my faith in Jesus, there are moments where it just feels like the why wouldn't I want to do that? It's the best news in the world, that a God who loves and cares for us. There's other times where I just think, oh, I just oh, I just dread having to kind of approach that uh, conversation with people. There's other moments where I just think, I, I don't know what I, even if I go along with it all, and I'm, oh, what about if people ask me? Or there's other moments where it just feels so natural and so beautiful and so right, and it all just seems to fit with the person that I'm sharing my faith in Jesus about. However you approach this idea of sharing your faith with Jesus with others, there'll be a whole range of us with different emotions and responses to it. One thing I can guarantee is there'll be a little bit of all of us that thinks, well, what happens if they ask a really awkward question? Like, I don't know, who made God? Or, you know, how many angels can dance on the end of a pin or something like that? What happens actually if they ask questions where we really aren't quite sure we know what the answer is? Now, the amazing thing is, if that's a kind of hindrance or that kind of worries us a little bit in sharing our faith in Jesus, is the reading we heard today actually addresses this issue head on. And we're going to find out a little bit more about this story and a little bit more about this woman who had an encounter with Jesus. And that encounter not just changed her life, but changed the lives of her whole town. It's an incredible moment that we discover just the little bit of Jesus that she knew went a long way, transformed her life and actually the whole town. It's amazing to think, isn't it, that this lady's story about Jesus, her description of her encounter with Jesus, actually not just changed her life, but changed the entire town. It says the whole town came out to find out about this Jesus. Now imagine that. Imagine if our little stories can have an impact far bigger than we can ever imagine. That whole town's what well, intrigued by this person and this way of life in Christ because of our stories. But as we go through this story and we look at it a little bit more, we realise what she told the town about Jesus, to be honest, between you and I and whoever's watching this, wouldn't actually be acceptable at a theological college. It certainly wouldn't get her ordained. It certainly wouldn't get on the Alpha course. And, you know, it's, it just, it's a little bit feeble almost because all she says is, I met a man who told me everything I ever did. That's it. You can read about it in the passage. I met a man who told me everything I ever did. I mean, she doesn't even mention his divinity. She certainly doesn't mention the atonement, the forgiveness of sins. She goes nowhere near the whole immutability of God and how God changed to become flesh. I mean, she doesn't even touch that. I don't know how she got away with it. it because it was simply this. It wasn't what she knew. It was who she knew that makes all the difference in the world. It's our stories of our own experiences of Jesus that we are called to share. We're not called to share great doctrines of the faith. Some of us might be, but we're not really called to, to that. We're not called to be able to defend the church on all its mistakes. What we're called to is to share our little story about Jesus. And as we do that, our little bit, which might not have all the theology right, that might not kind of nail everything down about the identity of Christ. It might not answer all the questions about suffering and pain and, and different religions. It probably won't answer any of those questions. But what it will do is this. When you speak your story out, it will so capture other people's imaginations and they will begin to have a hunger in their hearts and they will begin to think, well, that person really met somebody special and I want to know more about that person. It isn't at the end of the day what we know, it's about who we know. And that's the first thing we want to grab hold of when we're learning to share our faith. Our story, our little bit of Jesus, no matter how imperfect, goes a long way.
It's not what we know, it's who we know. So as we go on this little journey together as a church, and we start to think again about what it means to share our faith in Jesus, we take strength from her story that it's only a little bit that of our story can change our lives and other people's lives and towns. We take strength from her story that it's not about actually what we know or having all the answers, it's really about who we know. So here's my final thought for all of us as we begin to contemplate sharing our faith in Jesus with other people on a more kind of regular basis. It's simply this. This lady said, I met a man who told me everything I ever did. That was it. That was her story. If you had to tell your story, maybe even in a sentence, if you had to describe your encounter with Jesus in a sentence, what would it be? I met a God who cared for me. I met a God who gave me meaning and purpose. I met a God who sorted out my head. I met a God who kind of answered my prayers. I met a God who actually gave me an amazing sense of peace and rescued me. What would your story be? Maybe it just might be like that lady's. It may not have all the correct theology, but do you know what? It's your story and it's your encounter with Jesus. And what we want to see at Top Church is not a bunch of clever people. You know, we don't want a church that's got more degrees than a thermometer. What we want is a church full of people who've got simple, beautiful, profound, meaningful stories about Jesus and have confidence that as we share our stories, I met a man who told me everything I ever did, as we share those stories, that we find actually it changes our lives, other people's lives. And you never know, maybe our town, maybe our borough, maybe something will happen again when people want to know a bit more about this Jesus. Amen. We pray for the coming of God's kingdom. You sent your son to bring good news to the poor, sight to the blind, freedom to captives, and salvation for your people. Anoint us with your spirit and rouse us to work in his name. Father, by your spirit, bring in your kingdom. Send us to bring help to the poor and freedom to the oppressed liberation to those who are enslaved, and community to those in isolation. Father, by your Spirit, bring in your kingdom. Send us to tell the world the good news of your healing love through our words, to show your love by our works, and to see your wonders by your Spirit. Father, by your Spirit, bring in your kingdom. Send us to those who mourn, to bring joy and comfort instead of grief to those who are broken-hearted and to those who are troubled in mind. Father, by your Spirit, bring in your kingdom. Send us to proclaim that the time is here for you to save your people, for us to recognise those whom you are calling to follow your Son, our Saviour, Jesus Christ. Father, by your Spirit, bring in your kingdom. And together we pray the kingdom prayer Jesus taught us. Our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come, your will be done on earth as in heaven. Give us today our daily bread. Forgive us our sins as we forgive those who sin against us. Lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For the kingdom the power and the glory are yours, now and forever. Amen.
service today. We do hope that you were able to participate. We do hope it has been a blessing to you and also an encouragement to you to share your faith in Jesus with others this coming week. Do remember that we meet at 4.45 on Sundays for Zoom communion. So if you can join us, that would be great. But before we go, just a blessing. The Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord make his face shine upon you and give you peace. And the blessing of God Almighty, Father, Son and Holy Spirit be among you and remain with you this day and forevermore. Amen. And go in peace to love and serve the Lord. In the name of Christ. Amen.